Hi, I'm Zach with HKN, and today we're going to go over steady state analysis. And um, we're going to solve for the voltages of these two nodes in the circuit um, using nodal analysis. So, with this circuit, we have three sources, and we can see they have a, an amplitude value and a phase value. And this denotes that they're sinusoidal sources. They have a, they're putting out a current or a voltage that varies with time like a sinusoid. And we also assume they've been on for a long time so that everything's settled down and that's why we can call it steady state. But as you can see, if these are putting out a sine wave, it's not, it's kind of, um, it goes against logic a little bit to say it's steady because it's varying in time. But what happens is that the frequency these are oscillating at is stays constant throughout the circuit. The, the voltage at this node would be oscillating at the same frequency and the same with that. What can change is the amplitude of those values and the phase shift of those values. So when we're dealing with a circuit like this, we can say it's in steady state because everything will have a steady value of amplitude and a steady value of phase. And it will all be oscillating at the same frequency. So we can almost ignore the fact that there's a frequency and just work with amplitude and phase. So if um, one of our sources is putting out a voltage, say, that looks like this, um, one of our unknown nodes could have a voltage that looks like um, say like that. It'll be it could be phase shifted and have a different amplitude, but it'll always be oscillating at the same frequency. So we are going to use complex numbers and disregard the fact that there is a oscillating frequency, and we're going to find the amplitude and phase shift of each of these nodes. Okay. All right, so with, when we're working with just amplitude and phase shift, we can, treat, we can treat elements like capacitors as a, as a resistor with um, resistance of, it'll have an imaginary resistance. In this case, we happen to have negative J1 ohms. And we can do math with this circuit, treating everything as a resistor. So we're gonna set up KCL equations just as we would if this was just a simple resistor. So let's do a KCL equation for this node. So we're going to sum all of the currents leaving the node and we're going to set them equal to zero. So let's do this current. We have V1. minus this voltage right here, which is 12 with a phase shift of zero. And that is over a resistance of one ohm. Okay, now let's get this current. That current is just defined by the source, and that is two with a phase shift of zero. That's an amps. And then this current is just going to be V1 over 1 ohm. And this current is going to be V1 minus V2 over 1 ohm. Okay, and then all those, we're going to set that equal to zero. And we'll rearrange this a little bit differently once we have another equation. So let's get our second equation from doing KCL at this node. Call this equation 2. So we'll sum all the currents leaving this node. We'll say that V2 minus V1 over 1 ohm. We 
Okay, this current is V2 over the impedance of this, which is negative J1, and that's in ohms. So we can write that just as if it was a resistor. And then our last current is defined by this source, where we defined our current for KCL as flowing out of the node. The source is flowing in, so we'll call that minus four, minus four phase zero. And now those all equal zero. Okay, so now we have two equations, and just like other problems with all completely resistive circuits, we can solve these equations, um, we can solve this as a set of linear equations. And so we're going to do some rearranging of these. Okay, so let's combine all the terms, all the constant terms in the first equation, all the terms that have to do with V1, and all the terms that have to do with V2. So we will say that First, let's multiply the entire equation by one ohm because we see one ohm bunch down in the numer uh, down in the denominator. And then um, this two right here, when you multiply it by one ohm, it's in amps, it'll turn into volts. So we'll have, that'll keep everything right. So then we'll have V1 minus 12 phase zero plus two phase zero plus V1 plus V1 minus V2 is equal to zero. And then we'll rearrange that a bit to say that Three V one minus V two is equal to. We'll put our constant terms on this side. We'll subtract. We'll add twelve and subtract two, and that gives us ten with a phase shift of zero. So that's one. That's one pretty compact equation we can work with. And we will also rearrange this other equation slightly. So we'll get, we'll also combine all the terms that have to do with V1 and all the terms that have to do with V2. Now, um, we see we have a, a J in the denominator. What, okay, so we have a little property that says one over J is equal to negative J. That's, um, that's just a, a mathematical fact. So we can move that J up from the denominator and make the term negative. But since it's already negative, what this will become is, okay, I'll just write out the equation. So So we're going to move our j up from the denominator, and we're going to make the term negative of what it was. So it already is negative, so it's going to become positive, and that's going to be v2 times j over 1 ohm. That's what that becomes. And then we'll put our constant term on this side. It's minus 4, so we'll get plus 4 phase zero degrees, and we will multiply everything by one ohm. We'll get V2 minus V1 plus V2 times J is equal to 
Um, that this again was amps, and once we multiply by one of them, it'll be forward phase zero, and it'll be in volts now. Okay, so here's where the tricky part is, or the part that's a little bit hard to see. We have two. We have two expressions of v2 here. Now, one of them is multiplied by j, and one of them is multiplied by one. So. A perfectly valid thing to do is rearrange this equation like we'll put V1 out front. And we can combine V2, we'll say plus V2 times 1 plus J. Now if we distributed V2 in there, we'd get V2 plus J V2, which is what we have up here. So now we can treat this as a number. This is a, it's, it's a complex number, but it's nevertheless a number. We can do math with it, just like we do math with any number. We can set this equal to four phase zero. Okay, so now we have to solve. So this is our second nice compact equation. And now we'll solve these two equations and get um, a value for one, and then we can substitute it into the other. So let's see what we have here. Okay, so let's multiply, since we have a term that has something to do with 3v1 up here, let's multiply this entire equation by three. So we'll have, that'll make negative 3v1 plus, 3 times v2 times 1 plus j is equal to, now uh, 4 phase 0 times 3 is um, is just the amplitude multiplied by 3. doesn't do anything to the phase, so this is 12 phase 0. Okay, so now let's see if we can get a term for negative 3v1 from this equation. We can see that negative 3v1 would be equal to um, minus v2 minus 10 phase 0. So we can sub that in for negative 3v1 here. We will get minus v2 plus, no, no, minus 10 phase zero. Now we substitute that in for 3v1. So we'll just write this term again, plus 3v2 times one plus j is equal to 12 phase zero. Okay, so now that we've done this substitution right here, we have a, a term that has only v2 in it. So now we can solve for a definite value of v2. So um, we're going to re rearrange this a little bit. So we're going to take this expression and rewrite it as... Um, so we'll move our constant terms out to the right side. So we have 12 phase zero, we'll go plus 10 phase zero, which is 22 phase zero. And that'll give us, so we'll have negative V2 plus three times V2 times this number, one plus J. And that's all going to be equal to um, 22 phase zero. Okay, so if we want to, so this is V2 times two numbers, and so we can combine those two numbers into one number um, by distributing this three. When we multiply one plus J times three, we just distribute the, the three to both terms, and that'll give us negative V2 plus V2 times three plus J3. Now that's just another number, and that's still gonna be equal to 
22 phase zero. And one last thing, we, we can also combine these two V2s and have V2 times a single number. Now we have V2 times 3 plus J3, and we have minus V2, which is minus 1 V2. So what we can do is we can subtract 1 from the real part of this number, and that will give us V2 times 2 plus J3 is equal to 22 phase 0. Now, we have V times some number is equal to another number, and so we can get a value for V2 by saying that V2 is equal to 22 phase 0 over 2 plus J3. Now, we can see that we have um, two complex numbers in two different forms. We can have we have a polar form and a Cartesian form right there. So um, there's different ways you could do this. Um, you could do this division. You could convert this to polar form and do the rules for that. The easiest way is to type these two numbers into your calculator with parentheses around them and divide them like that. You're calculator will spit out a single number. There's also a setting in your calculator that you can tell it what form to give you the answer and you can have it give you it in polar form or in Cartesian form. So if you type these two numbers, you can type them in, either, in a combination of either form into your calculator. And we told our calculator to give us our number in polar form. And what it gave us was 6.1 with a phase shift of negative 53.56.3 degrees. And that is the value of V2. This is in volts. So that that again is just is just a number. So that's that's your value V2. Okay, so now we can substitute this value of V2 back into some equation that has to do with V1 and we can get a definite value for V1. So let's substitute this into this equation up here. That'll give us that. Three V1 minus V2, but V2 is this. So we'll say minus 6.1 phase negative 56.3 degrees is equal to 10 phase 0. And we will say further that 3v1 is equal to 10 phase 0 plus 6.1 6 phase negative 56.3 degrees. Now this, again, is just, um, so you could type this into your calculator and get a number, or you could type the entire thing that I'm about to write. V1, we're just going to divide through by 3. This is some number, we'll divide that number by 3. All of that divided by 3. And you could type this into your calculator, and the answer it will give you is that V1 is equal to 4.8 volts with a phase shift of negative. 20.8 degrees. So now we have these values for V1 and V2. These are the voltages at those two nodes. Um, so it's uh, what these numbers correspond to. It's a little bit hard to visualize, but let's just 
So 6.1 phase negative 56.3 volts is equal to, is the same thing as, Six point one times cosine of we never were given a frequency that these sources are oscillating at, but they are oscillating at some frequency and they're all oscillating at the same frequency, that's kind of necessary. And we'll just call that um, that angular frequency, we'll call it omega. So this is so this number in this circuit is equal to 6.1 times cosine of that frequency plus the phase shift, which in this case is a negative number. So let's say minus 56.3 degrees. And that's what this number means. It's just a more compact way of writing this number. And since the, the, uh, since the um, frequency in this circuit is always the same, we can kind of forget about that and do the math this way. But this is what this means right here.